All right, after a short break, it's time to work on the brakes right there. Believe it or not, parts for this car are a little hard to find. How many 1965 Buick Rivieras have you seen? I know there was only like 35,000 made in 65, and it wasn't a vastly different number in 63 and 4. So, parts are a little unique. Let me show you what we got. I've got a set of shoes, front and rear, for both sides, right here. I've got two brake hoses for the front. I've got the single pop master cylinder from Ray Bestus. I got two sets of wheel cylinders, two for the front, two for the back. Don't know which ones are which yet. I've also got the brake hose for the back. All these parts are going to wind up getting installed. But first, let's get back to that and get that backing plate off. So if you guys remember from the last video, I'm cheating just a little bit here. I've already got the backing plate off. The drum is sitting over there. Nice big Buick uh, aluminum fin drum. Uh, working on getting some wheel bearings for it. But anyways, another day. Uh, I've sprayed the hose where the steel line comes in. I've soaked that in penetrating oil. I'm going to grab a bucket to put under it so that way any drips fall into the bucket. There's no fluid in the master cylinder. I don't know where it went, but if there's any in the line, I don't want it all over the place. So, here's where I've got. Um, also, information. If you are doing this from the very beginning, you've got uh, those two bolts, front and rear. Those hold the steering shaft, that little greasy guy, into place. Uh, that goes through the backing plate in both of those two holes. You got the one at the very top that goes into this boss right here. So since I've got it knocked free, I'm going to clean it up, especially since all I have to do is allegedly loosen that guy. So let's grab a flare wrench, not just a normal open end wrench. We need a flare wrench because it's got the, uh, the claws that go all the way around in the C shape. So that way we can put as much, uh, you know, equally distribute the force as best as possible. Let's give it a try because I don't really want to break this uh, uh, brake line. Not looking forward to trying to do that on this car at the moment. It's easier when the engine's out and the body's off. You can clearly see the body is still on it. Brake line update. So as you can see, the wrench is solidly on there. It's not going anywhere. I had to, uh, you know, kind of file on the flats just a little bit. Uh, they've been monkeyed with just a little bit. So I took this guy on. I had to tap it into place gently, you know, just enough to get past the little burrs that are on there. I'm going to start working this guy off just a little bit at a time because I don't want to turn this into a pretzel. I don't want to break the flare nut. I just want to be careful and have this thing come free like it needs to. As you can see, good things happened. However, the uh, brake line, the nut came free of the brake hose fitting, but the nut did not come free of the steel tube. So with everything loose in my hands, I unthreaded this by just kind of loosening everything. So now I still have to get the brake line free of the nut. I think best course of action, just soak it in penetrating oil regularly, slowly wiggle it back and forth, and I think we're gonna get it to come free. But now I know for the future on the other side, the rear is going to be an interesting thing. Boy, I hope it's a little cleaner than that, but yeah, let's, uh, let's take this guy back. Let's get it cleaned up and let's start disassembling. So that's sitting over there in engine degreaser, uh, trying to get the gook loosened up. But I'm going to show you something that some of you younger guys may have heard about. This is a factory service manual. Now, this is a copy, but it's a copy of an original. And the Riviera has two service manuals. Apparently, they thought enough of the car to really put that much service information in there. Anyway, so I'm going to look up anything in here that pertains to the drum brake assembly. Now, I've got a good idea where I'm headed on drums, but this is just to make sure that I get everything right the first time. We've got this beautiful little photocopied uh, picture of what the drum is, what each of the items is called. We've got the removal and inspection. Jack up the car in a safe manner, remove the stuff 
It may be necessary to back off the brake shoe adjustment before the brake drums can be removed. Uh, well, let's see here. Um, we're just going to say that's good. Unhook the primary and secondary shoe return springs. Okay. Remove the shoe hold down springs. We can do that. Lift up on actuator unhook actuating link from anchor pin then remove we can do that too spread shoes to clear wheel cylinder connecting links remove parking brake strut front spring brake strut and spring rear only disconnect cable okay we can do that too separate shoes clean all the junk out let's see here clean junk pull lower edges away from wheel cylinder boots away from cylinders and note whether interior is wet the brake fluid doesn't matter we're changing those off you know, ah, we even have instructions on relining, which is kind of not done today. Installation and adjust adjustment, reverse assembly, more or less. So, let's get this guy cleaned up. I think I'm going to have to put it back on the car to do this correctly and, you know, effectively. So, let's keep moving. So, a couple minutes with a wire wheel, got it degreased. We're going to throw some just basic black Rust-Oleum at it. There, now it's all one color. Doesn't that feel so much better? I may be paying for this later, but I never did get the tube to come free of the nut. So basically, I just spun the brake hose into the fitting, tightened it down, put it in place. So now I've got this guy here, and when it comes to the wheel cylinder, we're just going to stuff it through the backing plate and, uh, you know, thread the wheel cylinder onto it, and then anchor it down once it gets here. The paint is dry enough. I've got the backing plate with all the brake hardware on there. Yes, I still have two brake hoses back there. One's the new one, one's the old one. But I figured it was easier to work with this when it was kind of anchored to something. So I'm going to set up the camera. I'm going to grab the manual. And we're going to start taking this thing apart. I'm going to find all the right pieces and make sure we put it back together exactly the same way. side now let's take what we learned on the other side and get this guy taken care of I bet we can do it a little bit quicker but you know when you're watching paint dry that kind of takes the time it's going to take so you know let's dig in we'll get this side done and uh, then on to the back end of the car that'll be a whole new adventure so let's just one one wheel at a time let's just start there <music> front end now obviously I don't have the drum on there there's a reason for that I'm waiting for wheel bearings and wheel seals uh, they're they're coming and I also have to adjust the uh, the shoes out with the little ingester here at the bottom so that's still forthcoming but that concludes the wheel cylinder the brake shoes putting them all back together so aside from the wheel bearings the front end is done now I gotta do the master cylinder, and I gotta do the rear brakes. So this one was obviously bad when I pulled the little, uh, you know, 
the fork out of it, it just poured fluid. So we know this one is bad, the other one was questionable, and I'm willing to bet one of the back ones is bad. We're changing them all out for peace of mind because we want to drive this thing. It's too beautiful that we keep sitting here. So we're going to get the backs done next. So I'm going to end it here on the front, so stay tuned. There will be more coming next time we're working on the back.